Welcome in the 21st episode. Today we will finish implementing our Ads Manager and also display the interstitial and the banner ad in our game. If you want to help support this channel, hit the subscribe button below this video, turn on notification so you will not miss any future video I release. So let's get started. First of all, let's open our project and we will need to add one more function to our Ad Manager. So let's go to the Ad Manager script and then open it. So right at the top of this class, we want to first of all add one more using statement. So right at the top, I will put using system. Okay. And then below the public static ad manager, I want to add one more action. So I will call public static. And this is going to be the action. And I will call this action on interstitial on interstitial at closed. So we're going to trigger this action whenever we close, uh, whenever player or we close the interstitial at in our game. So now let's bound this action to actually our ad, uh, advertisement implementation. So let's go to the start method. And after we create all of this interstitial and the banner at, we want to call this dot interstitial dot on at closed plus equal and then we want to create the function, maybe interstitial, interstitial at closed. Okay, let's duplicate this line of code. Then we need to add before the start method, we want to call the void on disable. And we want to move this line of code to this method and then make sure we unsubscribe from it. So let's put the minus. So make sure you do that. And now we let's implement this function. Make implementation of this function. So here is my function, interstitial at closed. And then we have the sender and then argument. It doesn't really matter. So we're gonna, so inside this function, let's actually move this function a bit down below this on disable. Okay, so inside this function, we just wanna trigger our action. So I will just copy this on interstitial at closed go to the interstitial at closed function and then copy and then actually call it. And then before we do that, we want to check if the on interstitial at closed is not equal null. Okay, so if someone subscribed to this, to this event, we want to trigger this event. And that's pretty much it. Let's uh, save everything now. And now let's start displaying our ads. So first of all, let's uh, take care of the banner. So let's quickly go to our word checker class and then right, let's scroll right at the top inside our start method. So in the start method, let's call the app manager dot instance dot show show banner. And then we of course want to hide the banner when, uh, when the win pop-up is displayed. So let's quickly go to our win pop-up class and then let's go to the function show win pop-up before we activate our win pop-up we want to call the at manager dot instance dot hide hide banner okay so we want to hide the banner before we showing the the win pop-up and then inside this class we want to display the the interstitial advertisement so when we press on the load next level button we want to display the advertisement which we be played to the play to the player and after that we're going to load next level so inside our load next level we want to call the ad manager dot instance dot show interstitial ad. and then inside this function we want to subscribe to to the on interstitial at closed event so inside the on enable i will call the ad manager dot on interstitial at closed plus equal interstitial at completed and then let's duplicate this line of code and unsubscribe from this event inside our on disable method and then let's implement this function quickly so we have our function here so for now this function will be empty but once we add the sound to our game we want to stop all of the sounds before we start displaying the advertisement otherwise 
our game sound will overlap the sound from the advertisement, which is not not really nice for the for the player. Okay, so this is the purpose why we want to have this this uh, this action. But for now, we're gonna leave it empty. And then there is one more place where we want to actually display our interstitial ad for now. So I want to be able to display this full screen ad when we start the game and the player first time start the category. So let's go to the select puzzle category button, select puzzle button script, and inside our own button click, right at the top, we want to add the add manager dot instance dot show interstitial ad. And then inside this function, we want to also subscribe to this to the interstitial add completed event. So let me add the on enable and on disable function. So I will just use the shortcut on enable and then on disable. Okay. So we have this on enable and on disable function, and I want to call this add manager dot on interstitial add closed plus equal interstitial add closed, and then let's duplicate this, put it in the on disable, put this minus, and then let's implement this function. It's gonna be here. Okay. So in this case. As well, I just uh, doing this because w once we will have the looping sound, we want to start our background music. And then, of course, we don't need this update function inside this class. So if you have it, just, just delete it. And then let's save everything. And now we have to test our game. So in order to test the advertisement in our game, I will upload this game on my Samsung Galaxy S5 phone. So let me save everything now. Let's go back to the editor. Let's Unity compile all of those changes which we made. And then let's go to the main menu scene. Go to the Add Manager and make sure the test device is selected. Otherwise, you're going to create some false imp impression. And make sure you have all of this app ID, add banner and uh, add interstitial ID set. And then there is one more thing I need to change. In the last uh, episodes, I have uh, manipulated the resources, data, puzzles and then for the food. I believe I changed some timer. So, as you see in, uh, in my foot three, I have set the five second. So I changed that to 120 second. Let's see other other timers. Let's set this one to 120 as well. So I have more time to find those words. Okay, let's save everything. And now I will go. I will plug in my phone to my PC and I will just upload mm, upload the game on my phone. So I will just go to the file and then build and run. And this game, game will be compiled and then copied on my on my phone. I have plugged in my phone to, to my PC through the USB cable. So as you can see I have successfully uploaded game on my phone. So let's hit play. And now let's select the food. And as you see the test advertisement in the interstitial ad is straight away pops up. So you can see this is the te test ad because at the top you can see the test ad writing. So once you close this ad, you are in the game and the banner is displayed. So this is also the test banner. So now le let's try to complete any of the level. So I will just find these words, beef and then bake. Okay, we have our well done screen. The banner advertisement is hidden. So now when you hit the next button, the next level is popping up. And the reason why the interstitial ad is not is not displayed at this moment because there is uh, there is uh, some delays between the request for another ad. So if the advertisement is not ready, then obviously the ad will not pop up. So let's try to do it again. So cakes then pork and then salad okay so we have a well done next and now we have our full screen ad again so once you close the ad the game is is ready to play so i think the advertisement are working fine now 
There are a few things which we forgot to do. The first one is is very annoying because we cannot go back to our previous screen. The back button is not implemented. There is also a problem with the exit button inside our main menu. So this is something we need to look at. And there is also a problem with our settings screen because it's not implemented yet as well. Okay, let's uh, now go back to our Unity and let's fix those small issues. Okay, so I'm back now on my PC and let's quickly implement this back button. So first first thing first, let's uh, first of all actually look at this exit button. So on the canvas, let's click on the exit. And as you see on the on click event it does not do anything. So I will just click this small plus, grab our main camera, drop it into this runtime object from the functions. Let's select the game utility and then let's call Okay, seems like we don't have this function implemented yet, so let's leave this one for now and let's go to our scripts. Let's open our game utility class and then let's put one more function. So I will just put public void, let's call it exit application, exit application, and inside this function we're gonna call the application.quit. Okay, let's save everything, let's go back to Unity, let it compile, let's select our exit button and then again inside an on-click event grab our main camera, drop it into, the, into here, from the function select the game utility and then exit application. Okay, so that's it what we need to do, let's now go to the file and then save. And now let's go to our scenes, select category. So let's implement this back button now. So I will just go, go to the canvas, back button. And then inside the on click event, let's click the small plus, grab our main camera, drop it here from the functions game utility, load, load scene. And we want to go back to our main menu. Make sure you put the correct name of the scene you want to go back. Okay, let's save everything. So file save. And now let's go to our game scene. Let's go to the canvas, back button. Click the small plus on click event. Grab our main camera, drop it here. Functions, game utility, load level, load scene. And then we want to go back to our select category scene. select category. Okay, make sure you put the correct scene name and now we can save everything. And there is actually one more thing in terms of our advertisement because when we when we actually losing the game, we have a game over screen, but once we exit to the main menu, the banner art is not hidden, so player cannot really interact in all of the buttons inside our main menu because this setting button will be below the banner. So we need to disable the banner whenever the player pressing either back button or if player lose and hit that exit button in our game over screen. So let's quickly go to our scripts and then let's go to our game over pop-up and then inside the show game over pop-up before we activate the game over we want to call the add manager dot instance dot Hide, hide banner, let's save it, and then inside our game utility class, so let's quickly go back to our game utility, let's add another function which will be public void hide, hide banner adds, and inside this function I'm going to call the add manager dot instance dot Hide banner. Okay, so this is function we need to add. Sa let's save everything. Go back to Unity, and then let's go back to our scenes again. Game scene. Then let's select our canvas back button, and then inside our on-click event, let's click this small plus again. Grab our main camera, drop it here from the function. 
let's select the game utility and then let's select the hide, up, hide banner ads. Okay, so in this case when we press back the banner will be destroyed. So now let's save everything, file, save and I'm gonna go back to my main menu and I will upload this game again on my mobile phone. So file, build and run. Okay, so my game is already on my phone. So now let's quick, uh, let's hit play. Then foot. And then we have our interstitial art. Let's close it. Let's press back. The banner is removed now. So now let's go to the puzzles again. And uh, I'm not gonna wait for this uh, two minutes. You can test it yourself inside your game over panel. But everything seems to be working fine now. So let's go back, back. We are in our main menu. And now let's try to quit this application. So I'll hit exit and the application is closed. So I think that's it for this episode. There is still a few things which we need to add inside our game. So the first one is there is really no logic to unlock another category. So once you complete the food category, there is no logic implemented yet to unlock the animals. And we will have to add another win pop-up to indicate that the new category has been unlocked. So this is one thing which we need to change. Uh, then the other one is we want to implement the sounds. So we're going to have like a sounds effect and then background sound playing in the background. And then also I need to fix uh, one of the issue indicated by one of you in the comment regarding uh, the selection, the win condition. So this is something we have to fix in the game because currently there is uh, you can win this game without even finding all of the words. You can find, let's say, the one word, the fish, four time, three and then four. And as you see, you won, but you didn't find even all of the words. So this is something we need to fix as well. And then after we done that, I will just I will start to make some small adjustment, uh, which was su suggested by you in the comments. So we're going to add multi language support to this game. And also it's very important. There is still no settings seen implemented. So this is something we need to add inside the game. So there is still a few things which we need to be done. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any issue implementing any of the future up to now, please let me know in the comments below this video. Any more suggestion what we can add to this game? Leave me a comment below and I will add your suggestion to my list. So thanks for watching and I will see you again in the next episode.